Hello there, we are filming this on Rice University today. Uh, if you're following along with the OpenStax book, this matches up with chapter three, number seven. And in this problem it says somebody throws something horizontally from the top of a building. They tell us the height of the building is 60 meters and they tell us that whatever they throw lands 100 meters away. Um, the only other things we know are sort of hidden givens. Uh, what that means is the word horizontally, when it throws something horizontally, that means its initial velocity in the y direction is zero. It's got velocity in the x direction, but gravity hasn't had any time to pull it down yet, so the initial velocity in the y direction is zero, and we could assume that this building is on Earth, because they don't have buildings anywhere else, so we know gravity is going to be negative 10. Sometimes you use 9.8, I'm just going to use negative 10 to round. All right, well this problem has four parts. The first thing we need to find is how much time is it in the air, What's the initial velocity in the x direction? What's the final velocity in the y direction? And what's the final velocity velocity? I called it the total velocity. What that is is there's going to be some velocity in the x, there's going to be some velocity in the y direction, and we're going to need to find that hypotenuse. And finally, because it says velocity, and velocity is a vector, we'll need to get that angle. All right, so here's what I would do. For part A, if I had to find out how much time it was in the air, first thing I'd have to do, I draw a little diagram to sort out what happens in the x direction, what happens in the y direction. Then I look at all my formulas, and I think, well, I'm trying to find time. And I know the displacement in the y direction and the acceleration in the y direction. That's just another way of saying gravity. So I look at all my formulas now, and I think, what might help? And if I don't see it in one step, I'd find anything, and then suddenly I have more information. So looking at my formulas, I see that if I use displacement is 1 half at squared plus the initial velocity times time, I should be able to do this. Now be careful, never ever mix up x stuff into formulas with y things. You can't do that. That's one of the things about vectors. You can't use x givens in a y formula. So I'm going to take a second and put a little y on there. That lets me know that's a displacement in the y direction. The acceleration, that's just another way of saying gravity, because it's in the y direction. And this initial velocity in the y direction is where I've seen a bunch of my students make a silly mistake. It says initial velocity, and they end up plugging in the wrong initial velocity there. So here we go. We know the displacement is downward, so I'm going to call that negative 60 times 1 half of the acceleration, which is gravity, negative 10 times t squared. Now here's the easy part. We don't have any initial velocity in the y direction because it was thrown horizontally. So I can cross out that term. Rearrange this real quick and it turns out that the time is the square root of 2 times negative 60 over the gravity which was negative 10. So all the negative signs go away and it turns out that the time comes out to be, I think I just left it as root 12 seconds. If you want to type that into your calculator, you can, but I'm going to leave that like that as it is for now. All right, there we go. That's our first answer. So the time, root 12 seconds. All right, we are one fourth of the way done with this problem. Now the velocity in the x direction, we have no idea what it was, but we know how much time it spends in the air and we know how far it goes. So looking at my formulas now, I know that the velocity in the x direction is constant, it doesn't change. Gravity only works in the up and down direction, so this velocity in the x remains constant, so it's an average velocity. That's my displacement over time. Well, here I go again with the displacements. I gotta be careful not to put the y displacement there. I gotta use the x displacement. Since I got the velocity in the x, I have to use the displacement in the x. So I end up with 100 meters over root 12 seconds, which gives me an initial velocity in the x direction of about 28.9 meters per second. Now you might have a slightly different answer if you use 10 for gravity, so as long as we're close, that's fine. All right, part C in this problem, the third part. It tells us we need to find out the final velocity in the y direction. I just do the same thing I did for all the other problems. I look and I see what's given, and then I look at my formula sheet, and I think, well, I need to find the final velocity in the y direction. I know the initial velocity. I know the time. I know the acceleration in the y direction. So now a couple different formulas could work. I could use v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2ad, because I know the displacement in the y direction and gravity and the initial velocity in the y direction. That would work. Or I could use this formula. The final velocity is the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. Well, now that I have time, I'm just going to plug in the root 12 there, and it turns out the final velocity in the y direction is negative 34.6 meters per second. Now, the negative just lets me know it's in the down direction. So put that over here. I got negative 34.6 
meters per second. Now this last thing is just a little practice with vectors. We know that when that projectile is launched off the top of that building and it hits over here, it's got some velocity in the X. We just found that. That was 28.9. We also know that it's got some velocity in the Y direction. That was negative 34.6. And our answer for part D, it's two parts. We need to find that hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem and this angle right here using SOHCAHTOA. So I plugged that into my calculator. I know the X component and the Y component. It turns out that the total velocity is 45.1 meters per second. And this angle, as measured below the horizontal, comes out to be pretty close to 50 degrees. There you go. That's how you do chapter three, number seven for OpenStax. I'll see you in the next one.